Hello again, everyone. You know, if there's anything that the average Linux user dislikes more than Windows, it's probably the mere thought of rebooting their Linux server or their Linux desktop, especially considering the marketing out there in the open source community would lead you to believe that Linux is a platform that never needs a reboot. So why is it then that when we install a desktop distribution such as Ubuntu, Pop! OS, Debian, or a number of others, we constantly see a message at the top right corner of the screen asking us to reboot. It just kind of seems hypocritical to me, but actually the reason why is because live patching is not set up by default on any Linux distribution. And what I want to explore in this video is showing you how you can actually set your Linux server or your Linux desktop up to use a live patch service. Now what I'm about to show you is specific to Ubuntu, but different distributions each have their own method of doing this. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take an existing Ubuntu installation and install the live patch service on it. So let's go ahead and get started. So here on my browser, I have my Linode dashboard on the screen. Now Linode is the service that I'll be using to use as the example Linux server in this video. But nothing that I'm about to show you is specific to Linode. All you really need is an Ubuntu server, regardless of where it is. It could be a physical server. It could be a VMware server. Maybe you are using Linode or some other cloud provider. Basically, you just need an Ubuntu installation. And in my case, as you can see right here, I'm using 1804. If you don't already have a server, I do highly recommend Linode. Linode is a sponsor, but they are a sponsor because I really do love their platform. They make it very easy to get a Linux server set up in minutes. They have great support. They have other distributions as well, not just Ubuntu. So they're a great platform to try out various Linux distributions. And they even have one-click app installations to make setting up a server easy. So if you don't already have a Linux server to use to follow along with this video, then Linode is a great choice. And if you visit the URL that you see on your screen right now, you'll actually get $20 in credit towards your new Linode account. So again, if you need an example server, that's a good direction to go. Anyway, basically, now that I have this server created, all we need is an IP address or basically some kind of way to access our Ubuntu server. Since this is a cloud server, I'm going to use SSH. I'll click here to copy the IP address here. Now, obviously, if you have a server and you have direct physical access to it, you're not going to need SSH. But SSH is the direction that I'm going to go because I'm sure that a lot of you guys that are watching this video are probably setting this up on a server. And SSH is a very common way of accessing servers for remote management. So that's the method that I'm going to utilize in this video. So what I'll do is open up a terminal. I'll make it full screen. And then increase the font size for you guys. Make sure you can see it. I think that should be big enough. And then what I'm going to do is SSH into that server that I created for this video. And you'll simply connect to your Linux installation either via SSH or by direct connect, whatever it is that you have set up. So in my case, I'll do SSH root at, and then the IP address of that server. Generally speaking, Ubuntu does not use root. That user is typically locked, but on cloud platforms, it is the case sometimes that the root account is used. I do recommend you disable the root account if it is enabled, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Anyway, I'll go ahead and press enter. And since this is the first time I've ever connected to this particular server, it just wants to confirm. I'll say yes and press enter. Now I'll type my super secret password. And we should be good to go. Now really quickly, I just want to mention that you really shouldn't have password access enabled for SSH on a public facing server. It's very common that cloud providers will have that enabled, but you really should disable that and use key-based authentication instead. I have a video on securing SSH that will teach you how to do that type of thing. So go ahead and check that video out. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into live patching. Now, before we can actually set up live patching, 
what we need to do is get a live patch token. So I'm going to go back to the browser so we can go ahead and grab that. So the next tab here, I already have it on the website that we need. The font is a little small here, but basically it's just ubuntu.com slash live patch. I'll have a link in the show notes below if you need it. But basically, once we're at this site where it says free for personal use, we're going to click get live patch. Now, pay special attention to this right here where it says free for three machines. So obviously that means after three, you have to pay for it. But complimentary, you can install Live Patch on three of your machines. So that's great if you have a desktop, a laptop, and a personal server, for example, then you can have all three in that scenario protected by Live Patch. So I'll click this button right here. So here I'm going to click Ubuntu user and then get your Live Patch token. I'll click on that next. And now it wants me to log into my Ubuntu One account. Now I'm already using mine for three different machines. So I'm going to create a demo account for the purposes of this video. So I'll create a new one by clicking, I don't have an Ubuntu One account. And then I'll type in my information here. And then full name, I'll go ahead and put everything in. So now we need to create a username. So go ahead and just try to make up something that's not already in use, and then it needs a password. Accept the agreement, and then create an account. And it didn't like the underscore apparently, so I'm going to redo that. And we'll try again. So next you have to verify your email address. So click on the verify button. And I'm going to go ahead and validate that behind the scenes. Okay, so that's done and I'll click return to email addresses. So now that everything is validated, I'm going to go back to the live patch page. Again, that was ubuntu.com slash live patch. And again, I'll scroll down and get live patch. I'm an Ubuntu user and then I'll click the button. So here we have the actual live patch key. That's this little string of characters up here that's partially blurred on the screen. All it is is just a bunch of random alpha numeric characters. And then we actually get the commands that we need to go ahead and set up live patch. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and copy the first command. I'm going to paste it right here. And let's go ahead and run it. And that was pretty quick. So basically what it did was it installed a snap package. A snap package is an alternative package format. It's essentially a universal package that has all of its requirements bundled within itself. And we just basically installed a snap package named Canonical Live Patch. So the first step is all done. So I'll clear the screen. Now back to the browser. And what I'm going to do is copy the second command here. Notice that the alphanumeric random string or the key itself is actually part of the command that we'll be running. So I'll copy this. And let's go ahead and paste it. And then enter. Now here we actually have an error where the machine ID, which I'll just go ahead and cap the file, Etsy machine ID, for some reason has already been generated, which is kind of unusual. So if you do see this error, basically what you'll do is you'll run this command right here, which will set up a new machine ID. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. So hopefully you don't see this error. And let's see if this will resolve it. Okay, so we generated a new machine ID. Okay, so now I'm going to paste that command back in here. And let's give this another shot. So it looks like we were successful. That's essentially what you're looking for right here. Successfully enabled device. So now that we have Live Patch installed, how do we check the status? How do we know it's actually working? So to check the status, this is the command that we will use right here.
basically canonical hyphen live patch and then status. So I'll press enter. And you can see we get a lot of output here. So what's up with that? Basically what you're seeing here is a list of fixes that are being live patched into the kernel that this server or this Linode instance is now protected from. And that's essentially what live patch does for us is it applies patches for security purposes to the running kernel without us needing to actually restart the machine. The reason why you are seeing so many fixes here is because this is a fresh Linode instance and I didn't actually install any updates yet. So for example, if I was to run apt update and then I'll do a double ampersand apt dist upgrade, not going to finish it, but basically I'll show you there's going to be a lot of updates available. As you can see here, there's 136 packages that will be upgraded and five packages will be newly installed if I was to go ahead with this command. I'll say no. Now among the updates that it wanted to install, you'll see that we have Linux image generic right here, which is one of several packages that can actually cause you to need to reboot your machine. So there's a few misconceptions I want to basically clear up. And one of those is that you don't need to install your apt package updates anymore. You'll still need to do that. The difference is when the kernel is updated, the apt package, that needs a reboot. But when you are utilizing live patch, the kernel is being live patched with the latest fixes. So you don't need to reboot on account of a kernel update being available. But there's other things that'll, re that'll basically be upgraded too, like Apache or whatever else you might be running. So in that case, you might need to restart a service or two if there's security updates being applied to a service. But on account of the kernel, you don't need to reboot for that particular reason. Now, another thing is that every now and then there might be an update that can't be live patched. It happens very rarely. In fact, I've only seen it once. I think it was with the Spectre and Meltdown exploits that we dealt with some time ago. That did require a reboot no matter what. That's not something that Live Patch was able to do for you. Every now and then that type of thing happens. So you want to make sure that you stay subscribed to news bulletins or news feeds that cover Ubuntu. And if there's a big breach or something like that in the future, you basically want to make sure that you know whether or not Live Patch is actually going to have that fix in it. Most likely it will, but every now and then you might have to still do a manual upgrade. Again, I've only seen this one other time, so it's a very rare occurrence. So again, to check the status, canonical live patch status, and we have a list of the fixes that are being applied to the running kernel. So if you're concerned about any particular CVE number, and it's not in this list, then that might be something to look up. But you should be able to Google any of the CVEs that are listed here to find out what each of these are actually protecting you from if you'd like more information. Now in terms of live patching, that's pretty much it. That's all you gotta do. Basically sign up for an Ubuntu One account. You get three machines basically complimentary that you can install this on. So again, if you have a laptop, a desktop, and a personal server, that's perfect. I mean, the average Linux user probably has at least three installations. And I think that works out pretty well. So considering that these three tokens are free, then there's pretty much no reason for you not to benefit from this. So definitely check that out, guys. I recommend that you install this on your machines. It can only help you. And if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Click that like button if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.